I get you. Uh, yeah, that's no problem at all. Well, well, we'll wait for some more people to come in then, if anything. And I'm just waiting to see if people have got any questions, anything themselves. How do we analyze a chart on a four hour time frame? Okay, no problem. Uh, do, 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 do. While this question is being answered, can anyone anyone else can think of any any questions that would help others or help yourself? Okay, so everybody can see this chart. So um, if you're looking at analyzing charts on a four hour time frame, I always do explain that it's better to go from your top down analysis first, regardless if you're going to look at a four hour time frame. Four hour time frame is good for support and resistance, but you do want to start pretty much on a daily chart to look at your support and resistance levels. Just like I put in the video that I put in the general group, this one right here. I explained that you need to go to your daily time frame and go to the beginning of the year and start looking at your support and resistance levels. So you want to go to like here, where's the beginning of the year? And right here. And then just do a uh, horizontal line, sorry, a vertical line. And then now we're going to just look at anything and we can start doing our horizontal lines. So for me, I'll just do anything like this. So I'll just put one here because I can see that there is a support and resistance level right here right over here i can see there's a resistance and then if i'm looking for any other resistance levels we can see there's one here one here and so on so i'm just going to draw myself some nice support and resistance level nice and quick this is literally how easy you can make it for yourself yeah doesn't have to be complicated when you're doing forex so to be fair this is good enough for me now because price is within this region if it breaks any further then we know we've got down here if I'm looking at any other candles, I can see a quick breakout, pullback here. So then you can get a bit more intricate, but I don't want to put too many lines on my chart. So I can see this was a breakout, breakout. Then it stopped here and broke out again. So I'll say, I'll put one here. Doesn't have to be perfect for now. Yeah, this is good enough for me. So these, this is all the amount of lines I need on this chart. Now, when I'm going down to a four hour time frame, all you're looking to do is to see when price gets to one of these levels and reacts to one of these levels. So Again, let's say you would have been able to put this one here because of this, yeah. And then when you see that this is here, this line would have been here already. So you would have been waiting for price to get to this line again to look for a buy to go back up on this price. Really as simple as that when we're talking about market structure. One thing that we will start to realize when we break down market structure in this, um, hold on one second, let's just see this. No, I don't have to really uh, adjust it too much, but you know you can always just move it a little bit closer. I always use wick to wick, which is always easier for um, for me. So when I do wick to wick, just give me a second. I'm just trying to get more people in here. Um, yeah, so I always do wick to wick, basically. So when I'm doing wick to wick, it just makes it a bit better for me. So if you want to make your trading a bit more simple, then you wait for the zone to get um, to get activated, basically. And when I say activated, I mean the price pretty much goes close enough to that level. So here you might have said, okay, I'm going to skip this trade because it hasn't gone to this level yet. But when it got back to this level here, you might have decided to take the trade there. Yeah, so when we go to look at how many pips this is, uh, let's just say you caught this one. This was a 400 pip move right there. So although this was, I remember this is just this pair here. Although you had to wait to August for this pair, um, pair to do this type of move, you had a 400 pip move, just nice and clean from that area. So now when you want, let's just say you wanted to catch like your sell from this area here. Now, of course, we didn't have a zone over here for a touch of the sell. We had one here, let's just say that bounced down. Yeah even if I did put one here and I was looking for a sell here. 
yes, 400 pips is definitely a swing trade. Definitely, definitely. So let's just say we had this area here. So this is, I believe, where a lot of people will uh, start to get problems when it comes to Forex. Now, I can already see clearly from here, this must have been some type of divergence that was formed. So the divergence was basically pushing price and broke this level and then pulled back. That's why I pulled back with so much force back into the zone, which is this area here. Yeah. Now, you just got to look at yourself in realism here. Yeah. And this is one thing when it comes to trading. If you was to get this, and even if you was wrong, first and foremost, you keep your leverage low. Yeah. And trading can literally be this simple. But one of the biggest aspects to why trading isn't simple for people is patience. Everybody's going through situations in life. Trust me, every single person is. And the fact that every single person is going through situations in life, that's what causes people to trade erratically, basically, in, in a certain way. And I, I get it, we're all human beings, we, you know, we can all succumb to things like that. But if you actually lowered your leverage dramatically, you put your TP down to this level over here, which is 380 pips, yeah? And then you put your stop loss up here, which is about 150 pips. So no, it's even, let's just put this at almost at 200 pips, yeah? Just make it a one to two trade just so it's nice and simple for us, yeah? And then do this one at 400 pips, let's just say, even though that's above, um, breaks that line. Okay, so now you can see this trade here. Now, the issue, again, you will have with this situation, this is a very simple trade. So you can see it pulled back and it would have put you in drawdown, but eventually would have given you more profit than your drawdown. Eventually it did give you uh, 260 pips, yeah? gave you about that much yeah about 260 pips now the big issue we have here is that when people start to trade live they're going to now trade this um trade here with a hundred dollars in their account this is where your biggest issue comes in trading look how simple i've just made trading for people too many people are worrying about flying strategies the flying wombat strategy the super butterfly all this madness they're worried about all of this and the reality is all trading is doing is hitting a resistance and a support and reacting to one of those levels and going up and down. That's all it's doing. That's all the chart's ever doing. It's not doing nothing more fancy. The only difference where, let's say, uh, indices is doing it as well, but it just does it less because obviously it's in a complete buy trend. But most currency pairs, um, this is what it's doing. So now if you had a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars, one, two, three, that's why I'm going to put it from the thousand to up to three thousand, or let's say a thousand up to five thousand, yeah? dollars now the more thousands you have the better for you this would have only put you in around about so if you entered on a 0 0.01 this would have put you in about nine dollars drawdown yep let's say you entered a 0 0.02 this would have put you in about almost 20 dollars drawdown here yeah so it's about between 15 and 20 dollars drawdown yep if you've got a thousand dollars in your account you're not going to be not sleeping at night when you're in 15 dollars drawdown you're going to be able to sleep and you're going to be able to focus on whatever else you want to do in life. So already look at the angle of how I'm hitting you up in this type of scenario. I'm giving you something very simple to look at here in terms of how you can enter a trade. Yeah. But then the next biggest thing is people's psychology. That's what the biggest issue is here. People's psychology and their risk management, because they're not going to be willing to make, you know, how much you make on that 260. So $200, 20 So you'd have made about $40 on that on a 0 0.02. If you took partials, $20 and let's say about 10. So let's say about 20 to 30, uh, $40 you would have made on this trade. Yeah. Calmly trading, nice and easy and simple like that. So before I continue, I'm just going to go and check any other questions. So maybe I can piggyback off of it. If not, we will go into some more. Cool. So yeah, this is what you're basically seeing here. You understand? And I feel like, you know, I'm going to make sure it's on this Zoom. So even, you know, if I do decide to put this Zoom onto YouTube as well, people can hear me out in this. Stop worrying about scalping super fast timeframes. I keep saying it to people all the time. If you do not know how to read the market, like how I'm explaining right here, you need to get yourself off of that lower time frame because you're just doing yourself a massive disservice thinking that you're watching someone else making a thousand dollars off of scalping and you're going to be able to be doing that every single day no that's not the case the majority of people fail doing that because if every single person could scalp and make loads of huge money every single day there'll be so much more uh, successful people from forex this is just the truth 
the biggest problem we have here is that even if I gave you the absolute strategy of how to trade Forex, you will still have different results from me. Every single person would. If I gave off every single second of everything I knew, you will have different results from me because things play a part. Emotions, yeah? Risk management. These things play huge parts in what we're talking about when we come into the Forex game. It doesn't matter. So all I can do is give you a nice clean chart and explain a very simple method of how you can actually just enter a trade. And this is how you should enter this trade. You shouldn't be trading like this with a hundred dollars because you're just gonna you're just kidding yourself that's the truth of it if we're talking about that uh do, 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 what's the most comfortable time frame for you the most i trade off of the daily chart i don't trade off of the i stopped doing that that's why you can see i keep selling people all the time like when they if they ask me anything to do with it or even people outside that see it as well you can see if you go to my youtube that my youtube has come more quiet my group has become more quiet then again it's the same point of what i'm bringing here because i feel like it's that constant thing where people want me to show them how to make money really fast and where majority of people coming into forex is they're adults and they will say that no 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 i get it. i don't, I don't want to make fast money but they're lying <laughs> they're lying that's the thing because i will do exactly what i'm doing here this is why i did this zoom yeah because this zoom i'm giving away absolute just knowledge in this zoom mm -hmm. but you won't see the amount of people that are supposed to be here to be learning this knowledge regardless if i told them or not because they're not ready to learn they want me to just say buy gold now sell gold now is everybody happy we all ate today that is not the fact. I trade off of the daily time frame because I'm understanding now more and more that Forex is a long-term game. You just have to get yourself in that position. Once you learn that Forex is a long-term game, things will start getting better and better and better for you. So I trade again off of the daily time frame. And exactly how I'm explaining to you here is how I'm looking at setups. I'll go to the daily chart, draw my daily to, uh, support and resistance. And like I said, People will think that I'm just trying to charge people, you know, and um, probably take money from them and stuff like that in terms of mentorship. But exactly what I'm explaining to you here is exactly what I made for here for everybody for free again. But people will dismiss this because it doesn't say how to make a thousand dollars using support and resistance in one day. Do you get where I'm coming from? So whoever is here, and I appreciate just the seven people that are even here, because these seven people are actually going to learn something much more valuable than all this other faffle that's out there let's just put it that way yeah and congratulations for actually being here being you know ready you know like beady eyed on that phone what do you, what do you mean do you call big john what's going on <laughs> congratulations for being here so anyway now uh where we're going we're going back to here and then we'll go to any other questions so yeah i've answered that question so it's the daily time frame for me that's what i do so i literally go to the daily chart draw my support and resistance and then i can look for any trades on lower time frames just like that i really really again do not overcomplicate forex like of course i know so many other ways the market can move and what it could be doing here and there but other than that if you're looking at a backbone of how to trade forex this is it like you can literally people trade like this all the time they really do you know it's down to the person how they decide to trade but the biggest issue people have and i'll say it again is that one people over leverage the life out of this trade they always do two they're not patient to realize that you might only get one trade here. You might get a trade here. There might You might have to wait on this pair, another. Um, obviously, you had this one down here. So let's just say there was one, two, three, four. So in the span of, what's that, March to June, which is like three months, there was only four trades that you would have been able to take on GJ. Not 56 trades, not 125. There was four calm, collective trades you could have taken on gj people are not willing to wait for that and that's the biggest that's why 90 percent of people are failing the market is not here to destroy you trust me it's not all you have to do is take your time man chill man chill as i always say you just have to chill it's that simple so uh do we have any other questions off, off um off of that or anything else I'm here for you people. I literally cooked my dinner. I didn't even eat my dinner. I just came straight to the Zoom and I'm like, nah, nah. I need to see who's awake. I need to see who's with me because it's seeming like a lot of people are sleeping. 
nowadays when it comes to this group. <laughs> it seems like a lot of people are sleeping. I like, let me see who's awake. It don't take me nothing to do a Zoom call. It's a base currency on GBP pairs in GBP or USD. Now that that's a uh, depends on your broker. So it doesn't matter if you're trading, whatever you're trading, it doesn't matter. It's whatever your broker is and whatever you set your broker up with. So I could trade this same pair and I can have an account that's a USD account or I could trade it and it would be a GBP. The um, value of money. So it's just like, um, just give me one second. One second. So you can see my screen, yeah? So um, this is that same trade. So I think the JPYs are a bit bugged in this, I believe, when you go to it. And they're bugged because of where the dot is. That's why. But let's just say that was that same trade. I took on a 0 0.02 and it did 250 pips. Well, I was looking for 400 pips, let's just say. Yeah. This is not 0 0.02. There you go. So it's telling me that same trade that I just marked out here would have been $56, yeah? And uh, sorry, 56 pounds. So you can see here, if I'm doing pounds, it's 56 pounds. But if I change this to USD, then it'd be $72. So it's just kind of like how currencies are, the conversion rates, it just changes. So I would get more dollars off that trade if I was trading on a USD brokerage setup account, then I would get GBP because GBP is like heavier. So it's less. And then um, it's like basically USD is weaker. So more USD has to cost less GBP, basically, sort of thing. If that makes sense. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> the mark. Cool. Anybody else got a question for me there? Don't be shy. I don't want hedge pairs, to be fair. I've never been fond of hedge trading. Maybe it's because I'm just not used to it. Um, yeah, I, I definitely can do if I have to. 100% I can do. Because you know what you're waiting for. It's like here where I said I'm not going to trade gold until it gets to 1870. So to be fair, let's just say I know hedging is two orders, but how I'm seeing it is that basically I could have put my buy in and then put my sell in. But I won't hedge a pair to make profit necessarily. I just don't do it. I feel like you, once you start hedging, you know, obviously you can, like I said, you can do it, but I feel like it's that game of one, it's like you're guessing. That's one. Two, it's like now you're putting yourself in a position of more psychological stress because you're like, is it going to buy? Is it going to sell? Uh, it's pushing to the sell, it's pushing to the buy. You're going to start over analyzing your pair too much now. Basically, you're going to put yourself in that, re that sort of mind frame. And that's just me. It's not a strategy I use. So maybe that's the way I'm looking at it. Maybe if it was something that I actually used, I would look at it from a different you know, point of view. But how I see it, it's like you're second guessing yourself in terms of how the trade should go. And realistically, this is why we have risk management. You put a trade in, it either does or it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And you just got to leave it there. So you can even see here straight away, you know, this is all transparent, this trade. I broke this trade down. And this is, again, why it does confuse me when people will ask me like several times, like one thing a gentleman said, it was what's gold doing now? What's happening? And I'm like, gold's not really doing anything right now. Like it's in the same position. The only reason you'd be even asking me what gold's doing right now is if you entered this trade that I suggested and you over leveraged, if you over leveraged, 
then you're going to be out thinking, what's gold doing? But if you under leverage to the huge amount of your account size, a couple of thousand, you wouldn't even ask me anything. The only time you would care is if it probably came all the way up to this level. Then you'd be like, oh, John, do you think it will go to the, a bit higher up? Because I have a position here and this position might be negative, like, I don't know, maybe $15, $20. But you, again, you've got a couple of thousand in your account. So you're not even stressing. So it's either you close that, take a loss and re-enter at the top here. Eventually it's going to give us what exactly what we want. And that's going to be the big sell. And like I said, on gold, it's leaving liquidity down to this side here. Probably more as well if you just go to weekly time frames. Weekly time frame. Yeah, this is a huge liquidity spike down here. So the liquidity spike is actually kind of big. So it's got a decent amount of liquidity to go here, here, yeah. And down there to chase. So it's going to go and grab that. Here, here, and here. At some point, it's going to sell it. Even though there's more to the upside, don't get me wrong, there's some up here. It's because the only reason why I'm saying it can sell is because it has got to a point where it's too overbought. Eventually, it has to pull back. It has to pull back somewhere. Even if it doesn't go all the way down to here, it has to pull back at least half the way before it can continue to go up and cover this liquidity over here. So right now, my bias is to look for a sell on gold. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, do, 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 do you hedge? Do you ever hedge a swing? No, I never hedge a swing trade. I just there's no need to do that. I, I would personally say I couldn't really see why you could you can scout entries, re-entries on swing trades. Yeah, but you can't. I wouldn't not can't, but I wouldn't um hedge a swing trade. No, I don't do that. Like I said, all of that is just you're being too inner the trade. That's the only way I can put it. If I was to put it in a slang way, you're being too inner the trade. Like let the trade go. Just let the trade do what it does. Because it's either it's going to lose or it's going to win. And if it was supposed to win, it wouldn't have gone against you. That's what I said. Now you're trying to fight what they're up to, basically. And that doesn't make they know what they're doing. And you see that a lot of the time on the Neo trades. This is what I'm saying. I mean, anyone that has got Neo that's in here, they can see. Neo is giving you long-term fantastic results. Anybody that's not staying with Neo personally, I, honestly, unless it's a financial situation, and I completely understand that, I'm just going to say you're being an impatient trader. And that's just me putting it on the table. The reason is, is you can clearly see that this indicator is giving you 400 pips in a trade, two, three, three, uh, one, three, two, whatever, 100 pips in a trade. Yeah. So all you have to do is just accumulate that over a period of time and you're going to be extremely successful in terms of forex do you understand but again it's that instant gratification that you want from trading and again like i said if it's financial circumstances I completely understand you know i'm not some person here saying you must pay everything in the world but you've got to look at the logic of everything if you want to become successful in anything you've got to invest that's just the way it is so again i wouldn't in terms of swing trading i wouldn't do a double i don't need to because what, why would I have to hedge a swing trade when this is the scenario? And this is why I said it's, it's like so mad because I can teach people so much, but psychology only comes from people being in the market long enough and seeing things. And this is why I do these pip counts and stuff like this when I make them, yeah? I'm not doing them to show off, to brag or bolt. I'm doing them so people can see, hold on, this thing actually works, trading, not even just the indicator. It actually works, but you have to wait. So if you look here, Again, why would I be swing trading if I'm this, you know, this wasn't even too long ago. This was just a month ago. This is literally from the day a month ago I posted this. And let's just say it's at the beginning of October. 300 pips, 400 pips, 60 pips, 280 pips. Here was about 80 pips, let's just say. 250 pips, 120 pips, which this trade went on to do 500 pips, which I explained to people in the NEOs Red Pill group. These three trades here all did like, this did 150 even just after this entry, did 150, no pullback to your stop loss whatsoever. Um, this trade here has pulled back though. This one here did 500, like I said. There was another one, CFJPY did, uh, I think about 300, 400 pips from this trade that I faked out at first and came back down. So why do I need to hedge a trade if this is the case, is what I'm basically trying to tell you. I can clearly see the markets doing this. So it's clearly got my psychology thinking, oh, it's just a matter of time and everything will be okay in terms of what I'm seeing here. Just that simple for that. So let's go back here. Let's just check these questions. You have a, when it goes the wrong way due to news. No, um, so 
you don't just release with a loss and re-enter. Yeah, no, I will just release with a loss and just re-enter. But most times when a trade is flowing for me, I'll put my entry at, uh, I'll put my trade at break even basically. So I'll give you an example of that. Just let me, just give me a second. So everyone's here. If you've got questions, please rack them up, put the questions underneath so I can go through them. You know, like I said, you're going to learn some stuff today. You know, if you, if you really are that interested in Forex, this is something I charge for what I'm giving out right now. And people that are in mentorship that are here are aware of that. But I'm just, you know, in the end of the day, it's not about the money for me. It's about actually teaching people and seeing great traders moving on with their journey. So um, give me one second. I do apologize. I need to just do this. I need to just get my screens. Because I have charts with my data on there, I need to... Like I said, it's only fair. I said it before in the Zoom. It's only fair for the VIPs if I don't draw out everything. Okay, here. Um, one sec. Oh, yep. So this is GBPCHF. So um, this is exactly what we're seeing now. So this was basically a swing trade here. Yeah, and anyone that took the NEO trade was aware of that. We had a first entry, I think, here. This one got stopped out. Then we had a second entry that appeared, I think it was here. It was either here or here. I think it was, no, so yeah, it appeared on this day here. We caught this one basically up here. Then they pulled back again. So if I was now to start hedging, look at what I'd be doing. I'd be doing all of this. Why would I be doing all of that when the trade went on to go and do 230 pips, which I was aware of? So all I did in this trade is, why I'm saying this, why I brought this point up is that when this one came in, yeah, I got these pips here. I took half the profit because I was only expecting it to go up, I think, about 100 pips or somewhere up here or something like that. Or No, sorry, I was expecting it to go up to here. But I put a break even because I was like, you know what? Because of they faked out the day before, I don't trust it. I put a break even. Half the profits break even. They reversed it. They weren't ready to go. They hit my break even. The next day, I told every other user, that's why this green line is here. This is what I give to people in mentorship, in NEO and stuff like that. I told them that, look, there's a trend line building. If price respects this trend line here, then it could keep buying up. The entry was still there. This trade never hit the NEO stop loss, yeah? Right there. And then what happened? That same day, there's a gentleman that caught this trade. Boom. There you go. Look at that. 250 pips. Beautiful. Straight away. So again, there's no need for me to do crazy stuff when I know the market does this. I've seen it too many times. And once people start seeing the market does this over a period of time, and I keep showing them that the market's doing this, people start to be in the group anyway, at least, and hopefully through from YouTube, will start to become a lot more calmer with their trading. So yeah, that's just that one. I thought I would say that there. Um, okay, because of daylight saving time, when does London session start? London session moves sometimes in terms of daylight saving, but now it's starting at the correct time. It's not starting at any other uh, time. So it's starting at seven, I believe so. Uh, give me a second yeah so this was london session here today so yeah you can see that london session started here so it's building up so london session starts at seven in the morning i would say it starts from there that's when the crossover happens and then around this time to one o'clock is when new york session kicks in as you can see here then the trend continued to go up so seven and one are your major times pardon me but um if you want to be absolutely better, start getting your charts ready. Start looking at your charts from 6 and 12. That's obviously London time. So whatever 6 a.m. London time is and whatever 12 p.m. London time is, is when you want to start looking at your, your um, charts. Obviously, convert it into whatever time zone you need. There is a, a world clock that I did put out there for everybody. So you can check that whenever you want to. Um, I really, really don't trade oil. I don't trade oil. I've never, people ask me here and there, but I just really don't trade oil. So I, I can't, I don't want to give you an idea of what oil is doing when I, I don't trade it because it would just be kind of false information. It'll be like, I'm telling you something that from what I know, what other things do, but I don't know what oil does. So it might do something different. And I'll just be giving you false information if I actually go and assess what oil is doing if you're scalping like i said you're just looking for the breakouts of the session so you just kind of go with whatever's happening like i said there's always ways to uh get into forex but i'm gonna keep telling you if you haven't been successful looking at the market from the bigger picture and making money consistently from the bigger picture don't scalp i'm gonna keep telling you just don't scalp 
Don't do it to yourself. It's not worth it. Trust me, I've met too many people that have lost 10,000, 50,000, 100,000. Yes, <clears throat> I've met people that have lost $100,000 in Forex before they've come to me. And that's no lie. Do you understand? Like, just don't do it to yourself. There's no need. It's that same, you know, you'll keep telling yourself it's the get, it's, it, I don't want to do the get rich quick scheme, but it is. If, if you really don't want to get rich quick, you don't need to scout. That's the long story short. If you don't, because you don't need to. Just show the market its respect. Learn what the market's actually doing and you will get paid. There is no rush. I had the last Zoom with my gold student, my, my student and a mentorship one-on-one uh, -on -one Zoom. And I'm so proud of this gentleman. Yeah, I'm so, so proud of this gentleman now because now he's able, he went from a trader that was always trying to scalp and figure out this, like the hedge thing and all of this stuff. He showed me so many different methods and to eventually now he's come to me and he's like, John, you know what I've realized? Yeah. I'm like, what have you realized, my friend? I purposely didn't do the Zoom with him as well for a long time because I needed him to go away to do his learning because any single thing that seems like it's golden, a golden nugget in Forex, a week will never get you anything. You need to test data. Again, why Neo took so long to create because and people ask me, oh, when's Neo coming out? When's Neo coming out? Or oh, it was called the Wave 4.0. I'm like, it's not coming out because it's not ready. I'm not giving people something I don't think is ready. So anyway, now, um, the gentleman's gone away, gone away, gone away. He's collected data, as I always suggest people need to be doing. Yeah. Then now he's got to a point where he's realized this guy only trades off of the monthly time frame. He's in a position now where he's just like, you know, and that's not because he's put loads of money in his account. He's just psychologically there now where he's like, why am I trying to trade 50 different trades when I can see a clean setup that's going to give me a thousand pips on any pair, let's just say 500 to a thousand pips once in a month and I can make all my money I need to make. Do you understand? Why do I need to try and make money every single day? Give myself the stress, start hedging trades, start wondering what's going on every two seconds, asking people what's happening here. That's what he just puts his trade, he sets and forgets. He will check it by the end of the day, end of the week, and he's in profit because he's waited for a good setup that you can clearly see on the monthly time frame. And then obviously he'll go down to see what's happening. Do you get where I'm coming from? So that's just, just for that one there. So um, let's just see what else we have. Let's just see what else we have. Give me a second, people. Uh, all right cool so does the trend line please get your questions ready i'm just going to ask more people to join i'm here for you i feel like these zooms when i throw them out like this it just gets people oh they're awake <laughs> you know, they're, like, huh? they're ready for action Cool. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. Does the trend lines form on longer time frame with wicks as well as well? Say six months wick to fifteen minute chart. Yeah. So what do you mean? So like, what if you've got like a monthly time frame and then you've got a um, let's just say there's a okay. Let's just just give give me a second and I'll get an example for you. Well, we screen share, screen share. Yep. Okay. So everyone can see my chart. Yeah. Um, let's see if you said anything here. 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, I'm going through the questions, so make sure you put your questions in there. Obviously, I'll go through them stage by stage, but everything I'm giving out here is something to learn from. 
you're, you're, you're talking to somebody that's been eyeballing these charts every day, day in and day out. So please get your questions. Don't be shy. If you're shy, you won't get your question answered. And again, I might be gone for two weeks, three weeks next time. Who knows? Um, does trend lines form on a longer time frame? Six months, week to week on so are you talking about when you say that question i'm just trying to think as well what, what you just showed okay 15 minute time frame or any liquidity liquidity which from that do they form trend lines on longer period of time as well so okay i'm trying to understand what you're saying here but let's just say i can understand it if i put this out there let's just say this is right so are you saying that if a liquidity forms can on you lower, hear me yeah i can hear you is this the gentleman that asked the question Yes, yes, sure. Okay, yeah, so please, yeah, to, to phrase the question for me. That'd be so much better because I'm trying to read it and I can't understand it, but read it, that's right. Yeah, earlier on, you you showed uh, when the liquidity wick formed, uh, I believe it yeah. was 15 minute chart. Yeah. Um, and when the gentleman that caught the trade, uh, the wick to wick, there was a trend line that was formed. Yeah. Uh, my question is whether with a trend line like that is being formed on a longer. Oh, okay distance between the wicks as well or is this just the next standing wick to the wick that was previous or next oh week? okay I get, I get what you're saying so let me go back to the previous one quickly sorry let me go back to that yeah one. thanks john yeah no worries let me go back to that one just stay on the mic for me for one sec so i can just make sure that would do that okay it's not going to go back any further is it nope it's not all right cool give me a sec gpchf Uh, there we go. Uh, this question is on the hour chart. And yeah, that's a better view. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, so you're talking about this here and here, yeah? Here and here, yeah? talking about the, these two yes John. Right? yes all right cool yes yes John. So, yeah anytime i do support resistance or trend lines i always do them kind of me from wick to wick yeah because i'm looking to see what's happening here so my exact thing and this is how you would have drawn this to see the breakout as well you would have drawn it from this level up here and you would have drawn it from this wick to this wick and then you would have brought it down so you see when you did this one here yeah like that and then eventually you would have put it to this like this. So you could have just put it straight all the way down like this. But as long as, just so people see, as long as this wick was touching this wick, you need at least two areas to make them make sense. Yeah? So here. Mm -hmm. So basically, all you was waiting for here, and this is how people draw, this is how people uh, trade naked chart trend lines. This is what I'm saying. You can trade like this in terms of breakouts, yeah? So imagine someone's done this, yeah? I used to draw mm -hmm. a lot of charts like this, but I stopped. But now, isn't it ironic that look how huge this candle is here at this exact breakout? Can you see? So yeah. this candle here was a breakout of a zone. Obviously, there's loads of these type of triangle patterns coming in and these flag patterns, as they like to call them. But now you can see that this one you was waiting for to see if price is getting there. You can see what's happening here. Price did a big push down. Then it did a pullback. Then it did this. But notice what's happening here. Price is starting to compress. Notice. It's getting smaller and smaller. So as well as what happens is when the flag pattern forms, price is creating higher highs, lower highs, lower lows, and uh, sorry, and um, it's creating higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, lower uh, high, lower lows, and lower highs. That's what it's doing. So it's starting to compress itself. It'll, it'll create all four of them at the same time. And you start seeing it keeps doing that, basically. It keeps doing it, keeps doing it, until eventually it can't do it no more. And then that's where your target zone of your alleged breakout can happen. So you can see right here, this was your target zone of your breakout. So at this point, it was either so, price was going to continue to go down or break out up. Of course, I was looking for the buy. Yep. Sorry, you were going to say? And that's my that's my next question. Yeah. Uh, how do you determine whether price would break out by opposite direction from where the flag pattern started? This is most like my most likely direction. I would say, yeah. So if you can see that the chart has gone to this way, the big, the, to be fair, to make it the easiest, how I would determine it, I'm looking at the chart overall. This chart was humongously over, um, like I said, it was over, uh, oversold. Block. 
So no, it wasn't even overbought, it was oversold. So it sold all the way down. As you can see, it's been selling, 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 selling. If we zoom back, it's been selling, 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 selling some more, selling, selling, selling. So it's been, oh, it's oversold. So I'm looking at this pair eventually starting to try and turn around and buy back up. That's what I'm basically looking for. Mm -hmm. And of course, you, there's many times you could have got in here. Of course, I've got my specific reasons why people in the mentorship know why I look at these types of things as well. Where I'm like, okay, this might be the pair that's going to do it. And again, this is what um, Neo's geared up into. It'll pick up all of these confluences, like I said. So now, if you were just using naked market structures, what I'm trying to tell you is that even if you had Neo and you wanted to still do your own analysis of a pair, let's just put it that way. This is why I made Neo an indicator yeah. rather than just a signal service, yeah? Is that you yeah. so people because people feel more confident if they're in control of what they can see as well just as rather a take profit stop loss etc so now this is what you can do so you can see straight away here first and foremost remember your whole bias is this pair should buy eventually because it's been selling 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 yeah now does it look like it's about yeah. to sell yes it might do because of what i'm seeing here i'm seeing the price has gone down here it's bounced up gone down here again double bottom yeah pretty much so yeah and then now you're starting mm -hmm. to see the buy up and now you're seeing the consolidation in this area. The consolidation in this area is giving you a sign and you want it to be right near the end. So remember, you've got one, two. It's not going to just buy up from here, hopefully. So you need it to get closer towards where the, the, the compression side of the flag for you to get a breakout down or a breakout up. The reason why we're looking for a breakout up is because obviously, again, our bias is the price has been selling loads. So we're expecting a pullback up. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is still a swing trade, right? Because it's between the zones. Yeah, yeah. This is still a swing trade. So not only this one, this price can still buy up like another 300 pips, this pair. I, I'm saying people are going to, over a year's period with Neo, yeah, people are going to start saying, what the hell is going on here? When they start to see this, even me, I'm still getting my feet just into it. Just like, yeah, because I'm not used to taking 500 pip trades. I'm used to catching 50, 100 pips. But this system build, gives you off like two, three, four, five hundred pip trades. It will do it. Some faster than others, sadly. Some might take uh, a week to give you four hundred pips. Two weeks. Other pairs might take a month, two months, but it will give you five, six, seven hundred. You'll be like, wow, that neo entry gave me a thousand pips from here. Do you get it? So yeah, this pair could keep buying all the way up. You can see how I drew this area here. I believe that price eventually is going to go up to this level up here if fundamentals don't govern a problem. So yeah. That's that one there. So hopefully that answers that question for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it does. So you basically look for uh, if it's a double bottom or double top, it's uh, two liquidity wicks and see which way they're headed. So you, you draw the line and from where the movement started as well, draw the line and then you uh, look which way the flag is going left or right, correct? Whether That's it's not specifically what I do because I've got other confluences as well, but these are confluences people can use. So I don't just specifically look for a double bottom and then it's like, okay, yeah, it's time for me to go through for a trade. I'm just showing you in terms of what Forex does, if you get what I mean. So if it's something that people want to do, yeah. so I did make a beginner's course on uh, double bottoms, double tops. That's when uh, the price starts to form a possible reversal, but mm -hmm. it doesn't mean always. It could do divergence here. Do you get where I'm coming from? So it yep. is a, a confluence you can use, no problem at all. But that's not what I do. Just so I just want to be clear so nobody thinks. But that's what John said mm -hmm. right? because it's a zoo. <laughs> that's what John said. I just <laughs> double bottom over and then try to line any bias. <laughs> so no, I'm being very, very clear and very, very honest. That's not just what I do. I'll do other things as well. I've got that. But I'm saying that so you can start to see the market forming, and you can take these trades. Like it's not wrong for you to just trade double bottoms and double tops. I'm not saying there is. But again, it might just be, let's just say now, if we're talking theoretically, it might only be a 55% um, win rate if you traded every single one of them, yeah? That's down mm -hmm. to you as a trader to get the, the, the data to test all of that. I haven't just traded double bottoms and double tops, just nothing else, just that. And then just entered trade yep. and then walked away. But if, you know, if you, by all means, anybody watching the Zoom, if they want to go and do that and they start to get a, a 55, 60% win rate, is there really a huge problem here? I'm telling you, the biggest problem people have is because they will over leverage if they take these trades. If they were just trading 0.01s and 0.02s, they'd make a lot more money. And they would make, but it might take them two months to end up making $100 off of that trade. But no one said that Forex must give you money every single, like X amount of money by this time. People put that assumption in there. And that's what causes, again, 90% of people to fail. Nobody has said that. Has the bank ever said, you must walk away with $1,000 every day? 
people have put that assumption there again that's a psychological thing in terms of forex and that's how people have to get their psychology right in terms of the word patient that you always use so again hopefully that answers your question even with a bit more as well yes it does no problem at all i'm glad i can help so um i'll go Thanks, into man. any other questions now so duh, 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 duh. thank you everybody for waiting patiently for me to answer that question i appreciate you waiting um maybe on a chart what's that? What's that? Um, maybe from the chart i will check oil no problem just give me a second we'll do that after i'll just see if we've got any other questions second question is it better to buy gold now and keep no, again, you're trying to, you're, you're, you see what you're doing with that whole gold question you asked me there? Why are you doing that? Why, why would you want to buy gold now? Why? Just why? You have no reason. It's just what I keep saying. It's that whole psychology thing. That same, same psychology thing. We know that gold looks like it's going to sell how it looks. Yeah? Why force yourself to put in a buy just to catch the buy? Just because you can just because you can, that's the only reason why you want to trade it. Just because you, you you say, yeah, I can. But if you're wrong and it just plummets and reverses on you and you end up losing money, you're going to feel worse is what I'm trying to say. That is part of the psychology and the patience. And they know that's what you want to do. This is why they will, look what they did today. The second, look, look, you think I'm lying here. I don't lie. I don't lie. I don't lie. This is <laughs> what happened. The second gold spiked up this morning, the first thing someone said um, straight away is, what happened to gold just now? Strong bounce. But everyone will be looking to get in their buy there. But that same buy didn't go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere. What happened is what they did. I was explaining to people what they could do. They just revert. They just manipulated the market. So they purposely, no news, bought gold up. Yeah? No news. No news at all. They bought gold up. Yeah? Boom, boom faked you to make you think yeah, yeah 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 look at that look at that get in for the buy pulled it all the way back consolidated for the whole day used news again to take anybody out that was trying to buy here they stopped you out yeah then they tried to give you the fake hope of a buy again here just a reversal <laughs> stop you out again to continue look at the bigger picture and this is what i always say stop trading the smaller picture i get people can make money from gold from scalping even i was one of them showing you but I've told people nothing from the beginning of this year, even from last year, but let's just call it from the whole of this year. I've said constantly, if you zoom up this general chat, I do not scalp gold anymore. I do not do it. I only trade it off of zones because if not, you're just putting yourself in a world full of stress and headache. Just wait for it to get to a zone, enter your trade, walk away. If you're wrong, you re-enter later on. But if you're patient and you're waiting for it to get to extreme zones, it is most likely going to reverse and give you a decent enough swing trade. You're looking at 500 pips to 1,000 pips. And if you're really lucky, it can give you more. It's really that simple. Like I'm telling you, a lot of people overcomplicate gold because it makes fast money and they want to scalp it with heavy leverage. That's, all, that's what I see. And it's what I've seen. So it's all I can explain on that. So hopefully, again, that answers that question there for you because i can't i have to make sure i keep stating that fact to people because you can't teach people psychology they have to be taught it by the market and the market will teach you that by losing money once you lose enough money your psychology will start to fall into place i'm telling you trust me um or anyways yeah cool so I answered that question. Okay, I'm going to go to oil. Can you give me the abbreviation for oil, please? Yeah. So if you give me the symbol, sorry, should I say for oil? I'm not too sure which one it is. Is it UK or US oil or what is it? I, ne I really, really don't trade oil. <laughs> so if you can just type it in there, then I can look for the oil and I'll put it on my screen. Wow, so I'm waiting for that. I'm going to keep doing this every time. Yeah, that's what you can do as well. You can just buy physical gold and hold forever because you know it's never going to go to it. If, if gold goes to absolute zero, the whole world's coming to an end as well, I'm sure. So 
yeah, that's a very good topic uh, point there, sorry, to say is buy physical gold. If it hits 900 by any chance, then so. US oil crude oil, is that exactly how you type it in trading view? US oil crude oil, yeah? There is no other, like, it's not like CRU oil or anything like that, or US, like, is that exactly how you type it in trading view? And um, yeah, if, if um, gold gets to the highest levels, then yeah. Like the way they're holding price now on gold, it's not nice. I don't like it when they do that because of course it leads them to want to do another um, stop hunt, basically. That's all they'll be doing right now. They could just do another stop hunt. So you can see this is a consolidation. So they could stop hunt it all the way up to this level here, or up to this level here now. But again, if you've got an order in here where I've told you to put in an order, you should be fine. Because, hold on. I'm perfectly fine right now. I can show you a screenshot of it. I'm not even lying. I've got a order in around this area and I've got a break even right there. So obviously I haven't put my break even yet. I've waited because it hasn't broke out of this zone yet. So I waited. I put the first order in. Sorry, the first, this is what I did. Sorry, on this trade. I put two orders in. I took out one order when it went all the way here. I told every single person that this gold is going to pull back. It's notorious for that. So they hopefully they took out their money and didn't just expect it to just drop, you know, free fall for them. So I told them to take it out. And then I've left my other position here. But I've still left the stop loss here. So I've made money off of this first trade. Yeah, this is trade management. This is all what I teach in mentorship, if you want to know. So now I'm in a position where I've made money off of this trade. Okay, so now I've made this money. Now I can leave this stop loss here. And even if this trade pulls back to a stop loss, I will not lose. Because I know that this area, again, you can see one, two, like this area is a massive area of interest. This is the same 1870. Before price got anywhere near there, I was telling people about. Same 1870. And my logic behind that, just so anyone can see here, transparent as hell I'm trying to be here right now. Yeah for people look the market whoops look what happened over here the market did a massive breakout sell from this level so we did a massive breakout sell from this level they used force so it must have had to it had to be a huge decision for the market to actually say you know what we're not going to consolidate and pull back up so i'm saying okay before they go up further or down again the market's going to do something here most likely it's going to reverse for them to trick people yes they might pull it back up one more level again then pull it back down for the final sell but in the end of the day we're in here and we're, we're playing with them right now like i said i'm playing with them so i've entered this trade i've taken off money i'm still in this trade right now right here you look i've, I've even shown it in the general group i don't even have to show it again it's right here look this is my third position third entry i entered a gold look it's transparent as hell you understand what i'm saying this is how you can trade gold and that's how even if i'm scalping it that's how I'm getting in for my scalp. Do you get it? Because now I've made, off of gold, I've made almost 600 um, GBP off of doing this, what I'm showing you here, before the big move. So even if I only come out with 200 GBP, then so be it. I tried. But if I'm right and it does drop, then this will eventually hopefully go to 500, 500, et cetera. And that's how you do that. So you got to just wait for it to get to its zones. All right, US oil. Uh, it's written oil. Okay. Oil. All right, let me check that. Give me a second. Yeah. Let's just do this. Uh, uh, so, oil. That's what we're going to do. So, uh, where are we? So is it this one here? Which one is it? Is it which one? Is it this one here? Oil crude? Let's go to the daily chart. Let's just see. Yeah, already I don't like the way this looks. This is this is what I wouldn't, yeah, I can see already. And I said it every, I think someone else asked me about this once in mentorship as well. I told them, oil moves like indices. That's what it's looking like. And let's just do this this is the easiest way to check it boom 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 okay so it's, co it's consolidating a little bit more okay yeah this is a clear this is a clear um it's a sell right now did you say you got a buy in oil 
So right now it's a sell. Reason why it's a sell, you can see this is just a weekly double top. Look at that. So, and this is what obviously they used to get every single person out of the trade and then they're going to pull it back. So if it is going to continue to sell, then I'll say you're looking at here, but this is a big level. I don't know how quick oil moves. There is liquidity on the oil down here. So yeah, if they are going to sell it, continue to sell it, you're looking at this level here. If they are going to buy it, then yeah, you're looking at here. looking at this level right here so if they are going to reverse here and buy back up then you're looking at this level and then you're looking at some type of continuation like this let's put it here put it here so you are looking at something like this so if they're going to buy it you're looking at this let's just say yeah if they're going to buy it and if they're going to sell it, then you are looking at them doing this basically. I'm still sure. So yeah, you need to make up your mind on how you're doing what you're doing there. No market structure. Where is the weekly double top? The weekly double top is um sorry, no, it wasn't a weekly, it was a daily double top. My bad. It was a daily double top. The daily double top is here. One, two. They tried to fake out sell, but they didn't sell all the way. They found a support on this level here, as you can see, and then they've brought it back up all the way. So they reversed it, flip reversed it, boom, taking out all of the orders that were above this level for a sell. This is one, two. So this is a good example to show you what gold can do, long story short. So you can see how now this is a level of interest, obviously here, there must've been so many sell orders from this level, pending orders. They've made sure they've activated every single sell order, broke through that level, and then they've grabbed everybody's money. And as they've grabbed everybody's money and everyone's thinking, yeah, 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 man, I'm, I'm in the profit. They've taken you all out because probably hit your stop loss. And then they've just flipped, reversed it all the way back. That's what they're trying to do now, it looks like. So they've basically taken you on a roller coaster. If they pull it all the way down here, anybody with any buy orders is out. Anybody with any sell orders got taken out by this already. So, and now you're like, is it going to buy from this level? Like what I just drew. So that's what you're basically going to start looking at now. Is it going to buy? Is it going to do this? Or is it going to do this? But the realism is it looks overbought. I don't know how it moves, if it moves like indices and that. But if this is a currency pair right now, this would be looking to sell back down to this level here. So it's not going to buy if it's a currency pair. But again, I do not know how oil moves. So that's up to what it does. <laughs> Yeah, this person knows. If so, boy, this will go to, it will drop, it will drop. If it is moving like a currency pair, and I'm seeing quite a lot of movement like a currency pair here, and even like gold, yeah, it could just, boom, it could plummet down to that level. Cool. Hopefully that answers that question. Anybody else got any other questions? Come on, come on, people. Come on, let's go, let's go. Let's get these questions. Let's get these questions. Let's get these questions. Let's get these questions. Let's get them going. Who's rising the market? Is it a credit grab? You won't really know. You just won't know when it comes to liquidity grabs. Like, um, you just won't know, man. You just really, so let's just say here. So GU, now this example, I'll give this one out. So this is a trade. So, and this is one that we're technically where we was already in. I believe it's still going to buy back up as well. So this is, I'll explain it to you exactly. So now when I go to other time frames, GU, looking at a buying GU right now, it's popped up on the indicator. It's given us our trade up to 60 pips now. It rejected because of obviously all that heavy news that was going on towards the end of this week. As everyone saw, the market moved nuts today. Yeah, lucky I wasn't trading too much. So pretty cool. No problems for me. But there's a massive liquidity that it left here in the previous week, as you can see. So if GU does want to continue to buy, then where else is it going to go? It's going to go and cover this liquidity right over here. 
that's what it's going to do. It's just going to do that. And if it wants to continue to buy, then it's going to cover this liquidity. And then if it wants to buy some more, it's going to cover this liquidity up here. <laughs> if it wants to buy a bit more than that to just annoy everyone's life, then it's going to buy to there. And then one, two, three, four, one, there you go. There's your levels right there. Like it's actually laughable. That's if they want to continue to buy. So never get overconfident. Never get overconfident. Because I've seen them do, look here, one, two, boom, reverse down. So at the same way, there's liquidity going up. Remember, there's liquidity to the downside on some of these pairs as well. So it's all depending on what they're doing, what time of the market we're in. If it's NFP, they can use NFP week to go grab that liquidity quickly, then to go reverse it, or they can stall it a bit to go grab the liquidity for NFP after like they can do all of these types of things. So you've got to just, you just got to know the flow of the market. Once you, once you get into a flow and you can see, I've got all my pairs that's marked up with different tabs. And this is what I do with the students. What I'm showing you here is this is like the basics of it. But what I do with the students, I do this on every, I keep saying on every single pair. And I always say that that alone is what makes the mentorship worth it because that alone, I'm showing the students every single week, what every single pair is doing and what it will be doing, what we're looking at. So I'm like, boom, like, I haven't even updated the mentorship pip count in ages because it's, it's just got to a point where it's becoming ridiculous. Once I make, if I update the pip count on the mentorship pip count, yeah, you'll see there'll be hundreds of pips coming through because I'm explaining that, okay, if price gets to this level here, you know, I'll go deeper into the reason why I believe it might reject off this level. But I'll be like, if it rejects off of here, then it's going to drop down to this level. So of course, when I'm putting the pip count there, I've told people that it's going to reject off this level. That's a valid trade that I've given out there. Whether or not someone takes it, it's a valid trade. Because I can't, obviously, everybody's got their own risk management if they're in front of the chart, you know. But it's a valid trade that I gave out there, especially if it's recorded, Zoom, just like this. And if it drops 400 pips, there you go. There's loads of trades like that. So it's really like this week, in, I gave out a 100-pip trade on EN. I gave out another, like, I think it was like a 100-pip trade on, was it, was it like a 70-pip trade, I think, on EA? So that's really like 200 pips. And then there was another uh, trade on GU. So, you know, these trades are there. It's just down to if obviously you can catch them if you're at the screen and how it goes. How can you figure out? You know, uh, so we can just react to. Yeah, but what you've got to understand is that it's not a strategy. I want to make that clear liquidity is a technical analysis and i've made that for myself because people will think like i said you can always try and make forex look as easy as possible that it's just doing this and it's just doing that and okay that's cool but again like i've told you they might only go up to this level here like what this is an example okay so why today didn't they go and chase that liquidity continuously so we're in the buy we're catching the buy it's gone all the way up we're expecting for it to find a support, continue to buy because it might be a compression and buy up some more. And then they said, hell no, hell to the no. That's what they said right now. They said, you think we're going to buy right now? Boom. Every single person that was in this buy going up, out, get out of here, get out. Because this is a sign for me that they're going to continue to buy it personally. Whenever you see them doing this, you're like, <laughs> I just laugh. I'm like, yeah, you guys are funny. Because they're trying to take everybody out purposely because they know there's like a 400 pip order coming in soon or whatever because they want to take every single person out of the market and it's good I, I don't mind i'll throw this one out there if gu just starts buying and continues to buy and there you go and i'm not saying 100 it will but if it does this when i see this <laughs> i said you guys are funny and on top of that so far it's doing what one two respecting its trend line again the same way i just showed everybody at the beginning of this zoom right there what's it doing boom so if it's doing that then what we can expect is for price to do this 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 boom you get and there you go and this is one thing that i could say that some people might struggle obviously neil gives us all our trades and everything and this is why i say when it comes to neil the indicator it's good that people are here and you'll be able to watch this and whatever is that again i this is let me I'll say two things here yeah First thing I'm going to say is this is why Neo is a monthly subscription. Yeah. One gentleman asked me today, he was like, oh, is Neo, um, is Neo just a one-off payment? I'm going to tell you from now, 
any indicator, yeah, um, John keeps it real with you. <laughs> any indicator you're paying as a one-off payment is not going to make you a consistent trader. You have to be adding more things to that indicator to become consistent, which is no different from just having an indicator that has all of those things that you're adding more as something you just pay for monthly. Forex can't be so linear in a sense. Like there are going to be other elements that stop your trades from working. So if this trade does go on to do this and anyone that is in the NEO group has witnessed in the last probably six trades I've given out, it happens. The trade will continue to go. And unless they've got a full effort to say, you know, we're just buying now, selling now, they are going to do this. They're going to do this to get you out of the trade. And then eventually it just goes on and does this. Yeah. Typical example, GBP CHF. Yeah. GBP CAD, same thing they did. Yeah. And um, so that's the first point on it. The next point I'm going to say is that this is why yeah, you can't just have something for a month. You need to be trading. And I even say this for mentorship. It's not only for, in, uh, for Neo. This is like for mentorship as well. I'm like, you can't just be getting mentorship for one month, yeah? Thinking that all of a sudden you're going to become some great trader all of a sudden just because it's John teaching you. If the market wants to be crap in that whole month, yeah, that you get mentorship, John can't do anything for you. <laughs> do anything for you it's not my fault i don't i don't i don't own the market i don't own it i can only give you an educated guest on everything that i'm seeing here so again now what you need to learn is you need to see things over a period of time with forex yep so there's no point trying to if you're going to get neo for just one month and expect you're going to get fantastic results yes you can win a bunch of trades but it can be an absolutely quiet month again there's nothing i could do about that and there could be a month where it's a good month but they want to stop hunt six times to only give you 50 pips instead of 200 pips that can happen but why i'm saying that is that over the period of time three months to six months to a year of you being able to trade consistently with a setup i'm telling you you'll see that oh this happened so now when i have my money i take out half my money here i leave my stop loss there uh, you're going to learn how to manage your trade but what i've done for you when it comes to this whole indicator thing is that i've cut out all of this jargon you having to learn all of this stuff the most you've got to learn is how to manage your trade and the only i'm even working on a trade management system to add as a um a next part part two to the suite of neo yep for people trying to make that easier for people but you've got to learn trade management yep so if this trade right now is just reacting to this area is about to do this you've still got again like what i did with gold You've taken off your partial profit, so you've made money. You've left the other entry ready to go. Now you're at a position where if this does not break to go towards your stop loss and this does buy up, your second position you didn't move the stop loss on is good. And this is why people take multiple uh, entries sometimes. They'll take, um, it doesn't even matter if you do because you can still take a 0 0.02, take off partial profits and then leave the other 0 0.01 at the stop loss. Because now if this trade just becomes a break even, it becomes a break even, but not every single pair that comes up on neo is going to do this some are just going to go flying like i said the gbps as soon as it came in pretty much the jpy sorry GBP, jpy it dropped 500 pips never came back to entry but the last three gbp pairs that have come through on neo i've seen they've done this every time they've given you the trade then they've pulled up a little bit then they've pulled it back then it's the next time it goes off you get it and that's what they do so yeah hopefully that just answers i believe it was a question but it was something I did want to show more than that. So yeah, I wanted to show a strategy. Yeah. So yeah, it's like I said, and I went off a bit on that one. I do apologize, people. I'm passionate, man. Passionate about Forex. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, yeah, do not use the Wix as a strategy. Use it as a technical analysis. Yeah. And that's all I use it as. I'm just using it as zones where the market could possibly go towards. I don't use it. And you can't put Wix into um a system as far as i'm aware so that's not how my system is built it's not built on wix grabbing this like, i literally this is why i use trading view so it's like go to trading view i'll check the chart and trading view and i'll be like oh here are some wicks and here's where price can go towards if it does want to continue to buy like that's how i'll look at it you know and that's that's an honest truth any other questions we got out there any other questions belly's starting to get hungry man i'm starting to get hungry <laughs>
<laughs> I'll feed the belly soon. I got that rice and chicken, man. I got that rice and chicken. Some stew, man. Some stew. But yeah, no, that's literally what I'm trying to say. So if I'm just trying to just even explain it again, even there's no questions. If there is a question, put it there. Just so everybody's aware and everyone's listening to what I'm saying here. And I'm telling you, you don't have to come and work with me if you want. You really don't have to. Like, you don't. But anywhere you go, you're going to realize over a period of time that you have to be there for a, a period of time. You can't just go to one thing for one month and expect to see fantastic results in terms of Forex. And even, pardon me, if you do see fantastic results the first month, that means nothing in the world of Forex. Are you making fantastic results for three months? Are you making it for six months? Are you making it for a year? You can have good a good free six months in Forex and have an absolute crap rest of the six months because the market is just in a weird way because of fundamentals. Uh, it can happen. The worst period I've seen that I calculated data on this year was from June, the end of June, to pretty much starting October. And it's disgusting how bad the market was just misbehaving in that time you can always scalp and make money but again that's if you want to be scalping and doing that i'm not saying you can't and even if you wanted to scalp was it really respecting your scalping because the market i kid you not in that period every support and resistance that you was thinking was going to get was going to get respected they were just breaking it they were just breaking it and they were continuing they were just pull, pulling these trends all the way down until they came back off of holiday they weren't ready to make anywhere support or resistance level that's what they were doing so it was a very bad period to trade that period, basically. But just before that, it was an excellent period. It was so good. It was like, literally, I'm talking, that's why I say, like even Neo was coming up with a 90% win rate. It was excellent. But that's why you don't see your biggest traders. I say this to all the mentorship students all the time. Notice how you didn't see any of your big traders that you watch on YouTube, apart from me, yeah? You didn't see them showing profits in that period. In that period, all of them went, radio silent they went quiet you didn't see them posting yeah look how i made ten thousand this week they were not going to post it but what a lot of them are not showing you is oh yeah this is a great point to go with, to lead into this point yeah what a lot of them are not showing you is that trading is very seasonal and again this is why a lot of 90 p 90 percent people are, are failing another reason to why you can't buy one indicator and expect it to just work for you trading is seasonal so there's going to be good periods of trading. There's going to be bad periods. If you start trading in the bad period, which you will not be aware of because you're new to Forex, yeah, you're going to think nothing's working. This makes no sense. Or you might have a good run. But then when it goes into what it normally should do, a trend in market, yeah, and then you're like, oh, what's happening here? This market just won't stop buying and you're negative some crazy pips, yeah? It's because you've got to realize that it takes a period of time. Of course, and that's what happens, my friend. That's what happens. They're not going, but the thing is what I'm saying, it's a great philosophy. I've already told people that even anybody on NEO, that there will be trades on NEO, most likely that will appear. Um, once again, obviously I have to keep you up to date because it's a subscription thing, but I'm telling them already, it's like, it's like the whole reason why I don't, NEO is programmed not to work in NFP. It's a dodgy week. It's the same reason why during New Year's and uh, Christmas, you got to be thinking you psychologically already don't it's like now i'm going to get someone that will say yeah i'm going to join neo on the 20th of december or the 15th of december and i'm thinking it's no problem for you to do that but if you only make neo's profit back for the whole month yeah or even if you don't you just learn how to use the system because there was not really any good trades or any trades yeah that you could take to you know be able to push your account even with good leverage you can't be upset about that because exactly what you just said there mr t glasgow like exactly what you said it's a bad time to trade. It's, it's not when you want to be trading because there's going to be low volatility in the market. Everyone's on holiday. So it's just what it is. So you just need to know. And again, I'm saying it from now, all of your favorite big traders that you see them, 10,000, 20,000 profit, they are going to go ghost during December. To, they will come, all of them will appear back up on your feed on YouTube in February. <laughs> And then you'll start saying, well, what's going on? And they'll all be smiling, grinning bare teeth, bare teeth with money in their pocket. <laughs> you will see them. Trust me. Yeah, like, that's fair. That's fair. It's very low. It's very low. How you can tell the volume goes low as well as ADRs on pairs. The average daily range drops dramatically. 
that's when you know the bad period's kicking in. With the average rate, that was something I picked up through, again, that you've got a data test. You have to data test. And that's something I picked up this year. Once the average daily range cuts down into half, you, you need to either A, get out of that market and don't bother to trade for the period of time, or B, what I say to people, this is another thing you see over a period of time and what you learn, if you, you know, stay around with what I'm doing, is that you need to draw, you need to go into your secondary account. Your secondary account is you might have a $15,000 account that you trade, but then when the bad period comes, you drop down into your $1,000 account, which you trade, because you know that whatever money I make during this time, I'm just lucky to make it. I'm not going to risk $15,000 worth of capital, obviously not all of it, in this period. It doesn't make sense when I'm completely aware that there's low volume in the market. Now I'm just being either a gambler, I'm just trying to be greedy for no reason. When as soon as this finishes over two months, I'm going to be able to make the 5,000 and whatever you're making. This is even if it's a thousand, 2,000 a month, but this time in the low volume, I might only be making 250 to 500 a month. All right. It is what it is. Again, Forex, they, the bank has never told you, you will get this money. People believe because of what they've been, you know, probably misheard that you are allowed to make this money per month. The banker don't care if you're going to make a hundred baht or a thousand in a month. That's not their business. Their business is to take money from you and not even to care how much you're making in that sense. So yeah, I hope that that answers that. You've got to understand again, trading is seasonal. So make sure you're aware of that. For anyone that is new and watches this, it's seasonal. And when they, when they start and stop that season, we don't know. It can just happen. Like... It might start from, it literally could start from the 1st of December. It can just start getting really crap. Could start from the end of December. So that's when they want to do it. But you just know around those periods, it's not good. A lot of people said September is going to be great again. No, 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 the market didn't start getting good until October. That's when you saw all the huge breakouts. On all the JPYs, you saw huge breakouts. It was October. Look here. October, where you see massive sell. Clean sell. You see here, even here, October, massive buy, October, massive sell. You see? Any other questions, people? Yeah, so um, yeah, USD JPY is, is ready, it's ready, it's brewing, it's brewing. <laughs> They're trying to fake you out right now with a sell. That's what I would say. They're trying to fake you out right now with a sell. But I believe that it's going to pull back one more time and then I'll get my sell in that. And uh, hopefully so, the Neo user, that would be fantastic if it does come through. Um, I've already told the Neo users it most likely will pop up on Neo. So hopefully it does, and hopefully it's a winning trade. That would be absolutely epic if it does. Just to, you know, just for that reassurance of your 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 understanding how the market's moving, basically. Um, can you as well as seasons? Yeah, so seasons that you're looking at is um, obviously Christmas, New Year. So it's Christmas to New Year. Uh, so I'll say from December to February, start understanding that the market could start becoming dodgy. So be careful with your capital. And then from June to August, oh, sorry, from June to the end of June. So let's say from July to September, October. But if we're just being better from September to October, the market can be a, a absolutely rubbish. <coughs> so it will basically, what happens in those times, as, that's what I said, they, the market will still move, but it'll be doing a lot of fake outs. So you're going to be like, yeah, the market's going to get to this level. It's going to reject. It's going to sell. But that's when they'll be like, huh? is that what you thought we'll be doing? You guys are jokers. You're, jo you're joking with your money. You're joking with your money, man. <laughs> when it gets to this point here, they'll just break it. Boom. <laughs> just break it. And then they will sell it. Because they'll be like, yeah, you think we're, we're silly. that You think that we can see that there's a resistance level around here. So that's the type of stuff they will do, basically. Like here, someone probably tried to catch a buy. And then boom. Look, September. So everyone said, oh, yeah, September, the market should be good. Look what they did. September 29th. Yeah. 
boom, gave you one last break to take you out, forced, boom, boom, two days straight, pushed all the way down. It went to go cover this liquidity over here. All this liquidity, just for it to spring, boom, pull up, all the way back up. I gave this out on YouTube. As soon as this was here, I told everybody on YouTube that the price would buy it. So this was a free trade that I gave out on YouTube as well. So um, yeah, those are the periods that are mainly what you've got to watch out for if you're talking about seasonal trading. The biggest thing about seasonal trading is your psychology. Again, if you've even been trading for a long period of time, because if you just come in the market, you've never traded before, you're not really going to, it's not going to phase you because you're still testing your strategy. So you don't even know if it works. But if you're trading over a period of a year, this is what you have to realize is that, let's just say you're trading for the year now, and then you have a winning strategy. It's perfect. Like I said, everything's good. You're trading it. You're, you're getting, you know, in the UK, we say you're getting gassed. You're getting happy. You're like, yeah, 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 I'm making money. Everything's beautiful. But then the seasonal period kicks in where trading starts to go bad. Do you understand? And then you can't start making that money anymore. And this is why people think, but can't a strategy stop working? Because they ask me. People ask me all the time, and this is what they're not getting. You'll see the question. Anyone that is a real OG in the easy forex group they'll see this question appear up appear several times they'll ask me oh john does the ichimoku strategy still work does the moving average strategy still work they will ask me that question and every single strategy i've taught in the youtube works the only difference is when it's going to work the best and when it's going to work the least so the less amount of time and that's all the only, that's the only thing there. Remember, the market can only buy and sell. So it doesn't matter if I show you 50 different ways of how the market can buy and sell. That's what it does. And again, that's why Neo is so plain. Because I'm like, why do people need to see 50 different ways of how the market can buy and sell when all people need to really know is, is it ready to buy or is it ready to sell right now? That's the question we're always asking ourselves. Do you get where I'm coming from? So yeah, that's literally it. So there's just periods and you can use any strategy and some periods it'll be good. Some periods it will be bad. That's just literally it. And you've got, you've got a data test so you can see when your strategy is good and when it's bad. So you know when to trade it with more leverage and when not to. That's the big question. And there were the big answer to the question you get. So hopefully that makes sense on the seasonal trading. And hopefully that was like, hmm, to some people, that was what it is. So, and again, I hope people can see the, the passion I speak with when I'm talking about Forex in terms of teaching. You see, this was just impromptu. I had no reason to do a Zoom today. I'm just doing it because I'm like, whoever's ready and sitting at their desk and wants to learn today, I'm here for you because you're showing me that you're, you're determined. Again, I fully get it if you've got commitments today and you can't be here. You know, we all are, you know, adults, like I said, most of the majority of us. So we have work, we have family, etc. I completely understand that. But if you were here, and you saw that Zoom and you're like, yeah, man, I'm not, I'm not going to join that Zoom. Boy. <laughs> like I said, boy. <laughs> so how, did that cover your seasonal question, by the way? Cool. And like I said, USD JPY is going to be selling. So I'm expecting for it to do. It is doing a little bit of a. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it is going to be selling. Yep. I think it is. It looks like it did like a daily version of gold. So it broke the high. This is what I was telling people to sell from before. I gave it out to everyone in the general group. You see, it faked out stop everybody out pulled back in respecting this level again um yeah i'm expecting for this price to pull back again probably towards this level around here so we're looking at around yep around about 14 300 let's pull it up to here let's get to that word so yeah around about 14 114 450 around about this zone remember everything's got to be an area it can't be nothing in forex is just um literally as a zone uh, is a line sorry so we're looking at something like this so around this area let's pull up to this wick yeah so anything around this area as long as price is respecting this zone here i'm expecting price to start selling down so this is this is a good swing trade as well because this is going to go to around about this level here so you're looking at price dropping at least 500 pips on this pair this is about 500 pips so and you definitely got to be aware of that because 
JPY. Go here. Yep. This was it here. So, yeah, this was the uh, show you where the Neo entry was. Absolutely. I was gobsmacked. This is the best trade that Neo produced since um, here. Look at this entry. This entry was what we'll call in the UK as, I think it was here, right here. So, Neo gave you that entry right there at 157, and then boom. So, this is something similar you're going to see hopefully on USD JPY, something like this. It'd be nice to come back after if it's done that because I'll be able to show everyone, but there you go. You're looking at hopefully something like this on USD JPY with multiple re-entries into the cell. And eventually this is what, again, what you see is that, trust me, like Neo is nowhere near finished yet. At one point you're going to be in, on the system and it's going to be able to give you this, the re-entries for all of these trades as well. Like I'm telling you, whoever's in from now, they will be the people and they, the people that stick around. People know that's in my, my mentorship, how I behave. Whoever's in from now and sticks around from now as well, they will be the people that I will be giving the best uh, sort of deals to or whatever it would be in future as it grows. Because, you know, it's just like anything. If you're in there from the beginning, then, you know, you get some type of privilege. So it's not nothing new in terms of that. But that is what I'll be doing because it's definitely because I'm starting to pick up how and when certain trades will be doing stuff like that and giving out re-entries and all of these types of things. So, yeah, hopefully that answers any question, especially USD JPY. You're looking at a huge trade on that, so be ready for that, boy. That is a free, that is a free 250 to 500 pips. I'm <laughs> giving out there again. Cool. And if there's no other questions, I will leave this Zoom right there. I feel like I have done a lot. I've answered about about hour, hour and a half worth of questions. Like I said, the Zoom is out there for anybody that's ready. In the last week, I've done three Zooms for the general group as well. Again, not being greedy, not trying to be a person that's like, join the mentorship and that's the only way you'll learn. Like, I only put people, try and tell people to get into the mentorship. Most of the time, it's because nine out of 10 traders they have the capital to join the mentorship. They're probably going to end up blowing it. And I'm just like, it makes no sense why you're blowing this money when you can just invest into that. And then you're going to be able to gain so much more knowledge, if not money, knowledge. Because the money you can get, I give out trades, but again, it's down to the trader, how they take the trade as well. So it's down to their psychology. Just because I give you a trade doesn't mean you will make the money. Some traders, I give a trade to you, they make money. Others miss it, they don't. They might make less money. They might lose the trade. It just depends. But again, just for the fact that I'm explaining all these types of things to you, having those weekly Zooms going over every single pair, it makes your time worthwhile. You just be in there. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You won't get many mentors that are as, as active as I am, basically, in terms of being able to answer questions, break down charts and stuff like that. Like, I assure you, you can go so many places and they won't be this active. And I've seen it because a lot of people come around and they're like, wow, I can't even believe you're even asking, answering all these questions. So yeah, on that note, I'm going to go grab some food. Nope, GBP, JPY, I will not be buying that pair as well now. I see you, Jenny. <laughs> nope, I will not be buying that pair. Jenny, you know where we're going to buy this pair. Shh. <laughs> I'm going to put out that shh. You know where we're going to buy this pair. <laughs> Okay, look, guy, you know, you know, I know you know. <laughs> Tony, answer, ask your question. I'll message you after, Jenny. Yeah. No, it's cool. I know, I know you're busy. I completely know that. So I'll, I'll put this one there. I think it's good enough, and it's okay for me to be able to put onto, to YouTube. So, yeah, I'll put it there. It's no problem. Uh, um mentorship is uh 50 gbp a month or i'm not doing a silver one anymore so it's either 50 gb month for the basic one but if you want to get one-on-one -on -one zooms with me where i can break down all of this for you one-on-one -on -one, that one's 250 gbp for the month so that's and um it's monthly as well mentorship as you can see all of this is a continuous thing that i'm doing continuously updating continuously doing continuously helping so of course this is a monthly it's no problem at all I'm going, to, I'm going to do random zooms. No, that doesn't um, include Neo. Neo is separate. Again, that's another 
separate thing because users won't be on Neo and this and that. And why I did it is because it's just that it would just be too much, man. If I was doing it just for uh, obviously, let's not say the gold zoom, let's just say the um the bronze basic level, it's just too much. So it's a lot, man. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot you're giving out. Which you if you're on my end of the, ter- the spectrum, you'd be like, Yeah, that's a lot, man. So I think it's a fair price if people pay. There is a discount for users, though, that are in VIP. They get a 10 GBP discount. No, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but at least it's something. They'll get a 10 GBP discount on top of what NEO is if you're in mentorship as well. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I know that is, yeah, I'll try. I know that, I know that for sure. I know that. I do, That's why I give out the trades. That's why I give it, look, gold. You know what I'm saying? I, do, I try and give out. So not only from the free videos, this is what, this is the, the whole reason I'm giving out gold is, you know, I'm trying to give people like that leeway of saying, look, I'm giving you a free trade here. You can, if you really do love the idea of what I'm doing here, you would use, the portion of that to reinvest into the mentorship so i'm giving the trade out do you understand and i won't be lie to you a lot of people don't do that they just take the gold trade there's more people than two three people taking that gold trade when i give it out some people are probably even taking it and putting it in signal groups and doing whatever i don't really care but you know if you if you're going to be decent about it at least take the trade and then if you want to do anything reinvest that's what makes sense because i give the most attention to people that are humble I like humble people, not people that try to act like they know it all. <laughs> yeah, because I don't do that myself. I'm just trying to be honest with people. It's like, this is what I see. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, reinvest, man. And I give you the best amount of help I can do as long as I see that you're you're actually trying to grow, you know, and you're and you're taking what I'm saying on board, you know, because there's no point in me being a mentor if I'm giving you rules to follow and you're just disregarding my rules. Of course, I'm not going to take you serious as a student. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's what it is. So it's like that. It's very, it's very worth it because you just, you're just getting, you're getting a lot, man. That's just the truth of it, and that's why I've made it that price for now. So it's like, I get we're going through like obviously hard times because of Corona and stuff like that. But I am giving out a lot of, as you can see. <laughs> that's what I need to say, man. As you can see, as you can see. So. Uh, no, you just just go to Google. A lot of people always ask me how much is something in um, this price. And I'm like, you can just go to Google, man. Right? It's just there. You can just convert it. So it doesn't matter. Well, Google will convert all the currencies pretty much in the world. It even converts crypto into GBP as well, from dollars to GBP. You can do all the maths there. So it's all there. So yeah, whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready. Um, the, yeah, Pip Hunter, I just, I've not been working with them for time now, to be fair, for like almost six or seven months. Just like a lot of people just ask me about that from time to time. And um, now we just had different visions of where we was going. Uh, you know, Taylor, the person who created Pip Hunter, uh, he was looking more to do like an M- MLM scheme type of thing. And I was just like, I didn't really want to do that with my audience at the time, regardless if it was going to hinder me or not in terms of people, because I feel like people always want like an indicator that can scalp and all this stuff. But I was like, I don't want to do that with my audience because I've never done that. People have tried several times to make me do that, an MLM type scheme where you multi-level market. So you get people in and you get more, but I've been like, I don't want to do that. I've never, I've never seen it as something that was positive in terms of learning for it. Cause you're not getting to Forex learning. You're just getting people that are trying to make money off of other people basically. So, and that's not what I stood for in terms of being a mentor. So I'm not saying that that's what he was doing or that's what his intention is. No way am I saying that. I'm just saying that that's not where I wanted my um, brand to go towards. So before, and I wasn't in control of it because he was controlling all of that side of what he wanted to create. So I did, and other people were coming on board as well. So I didn't want to, I just didn't want to be a part of all of that. You know, I'm, I'm a very, I've done a lot of businesses. That's why I said, this is not the first type of thing I've done. And I feel like a lot of people get that misunderstood from me sometimes and maybe they think that i'm just trying to be some forex whiz kid or something like that no i've done a lot of other businesses and um i just work better when i'm by myself man i just know that i can get to the point i can create things so i was like yep 
And then I just patiently waited, kept checking my confluences and then created Neo. And that's why I have Neo now. Yeah, I've always, I've had Neo from when Pip Hunter was up. Like it's not, Neo is not new. And this is what people, another thing people don't realize. Neo is not something new. Like really, it's something I've had from before Pip Hunter. And people that, people that were in my first Telegram group will know I've had Neo from before Pip Hunter. And there's evidence of that. I've had it, but it's been a part of a system. And it's grown into more of a system, basically. And, and then now when I put it into more of a system, I've said, okay, I've clocked one thing, basically, is that once you start giving people 16 different things to look at on the chart, the most basic trader is not going to be able to trade that. And this is why, again, Neo is like a subscription thing, because at least if you're a basic trader and you do get Neo, you can start learning how the market's working in the background. But then I'm going to be able to show you during the course of that, oh, this trade has gone up, news is about to hit, you know, I'll put that in one of the Neo Discord groups. Yeah, and I'll be like, oh, okay, close partial profits. Did it, like, I did, I did it with GU. Like, if everyone was alert and on the ball and actually being a trader, no disrespect, but you have to be a trader. If you're going to commit to a trade, you can't be a lazy trader and not check your trades. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. So if they're committed to their trade and they're aware of that and they've paid for a subscription, I've given everybody the heads up on GU before it reversed. Yeah, before that sell it did today, I gave everyone at least two heads up to say, look, partial profits. Um, it looks like it's finding a resistance here, basically, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I've told them what I've done. So anyone that did enter the trade from when it came through on Neo, they made at least 50 pips. If you entered, because it pulled back at least for about two hours before it went off. So if you entered at the low, I know there was one gentleman specifically that did. He messaged me. He was like, oh, I missed it. I was like, no, nah, you can get in now. He probably made like 70, 80 pips on that trade because he got in lower than everybody else. And then you, if you saw in the group how I managed my trade, yeah, I had bad entries on GU. But then obviously, because I know what I'm doing, so I can see the chart and obviously I'm like how I'm teaching. I made sure that when I saw it pulled back to a low, again, I put another order in there myself. I'm not telling people to do this as practice for themselves. But, you know, if you do it on demo for three, six months, get used to it and then do it live. Yeah. But I've done this several times. So I was able to just mitigate any bad entry by a better entry lower and then make the maximum money I could have off that trade. So I made like 80, 90 pips instead of 50, 60 pips, basically. So, so yeah, that's, you know, all of these things, again, is what I show in Neo, the group, the subscription group. So this is why it's a subscription. You're not just getting an indicator, man. You're getting, you're literally getting a part of me and an indicator. So it's kind of crazy. So yeah, that's what it is, man. It's what it is. So I hope that answers all questions for this evening. Like I said, it's not too bad. So I'll throw this up on YouTube. It'll most likely be out by tomorrow. For out there for anyone that did miss it. Um, I'm going to call it homework part two. Yeah, because like I put the other one out there, it's homework in it. So yeah, it's just homework. People can go and just check some things and go over it. More than anything, it's like a conversation I get to have with people. I like to have Forex conversations with people because it's something I'm passionate about. And I appreciate you guys and girls being here and taking it serious and being like, well, if John's done something, <laughs> I'm in it today. So Thank you very much for being here. On that note, I'm going to have to love and leave you guys because my belly is rumbling. I am hungry. <laughs> I am hungry, man. I'll see you guys and girls later. And just hit me up in the, in the Discord if you want to chat to me. Yeah.